Okay, so let's take a look at your video. I'll start by sharing the screen here. And um, we'll go over to uh, down here. Sorry, quick time. And let's just take a look awesome. at what you guys are doing. Good afternoon, guys. My name's Stone. I'm here with my man Gabe. We're absolutely thrilled to get the chance to come down here and talk to you guys about some business projects. So who are we? We are Monsanto, as you guys must have heard of us. We are um, an agricultural company. Um, we have worked on GMOs and pesticides in the past, and we were founded in 1901. So we know from experience just how intimidating it can be to be able to write, especially to explain who we are in a business way, especially when we're writing resumes, filling out scholarship essays, doing things of that nature. So we're gonna give you some tips just to kind of help you along the way. So the first thing we need to do is identify our audience. We wanna do some research and figure out what they wanna hear, what they want from your paper. Second thing we need to do is present these ideas in a really clear and concise way. That way it's not super jumbled up. Think about writing a 300 page paper. It's really hard to do. But getting those ideas down to three pages, it's a lot more concise and a lot more manageable to read. And lastly, we need to maintain a conversational tone. So we need to put some emotion in. Make it to where people want to read it and make it appealing. Have some resonance when they're done reading it. So I have a really hard time with commas, and I've always tended to have a hard time with commas. I use Grammarly a lot. It's just this free, really easy to access tool. You can put it on your dashboard. It fixes your punctuation, your spelling, your sentence structure, along with anyway and pro writing aid. Those are going to kind of identify your passive tones, give you suggestions to fix it. So um, an, ex an example of uh, how to boost your resume and reword something in a way that um, made someone who's had it in your life part of your company. So um, if I play basketball, or I'm assuming you guys are in some other outside activity or some sports, um, Ralph, um, what would you say, how would you reword this in a better way that would resonate with someone who's hired? Mm -hmm. Looks good. Would you, if you were someone trying to hire someone who played basketball or football, would you, wouldn't you want to uh, see that they're more than just a basketball player and see that they're, they're, they have experience working in the team environment? So we've been telling you a lot about ways to fix your writing, and this is why. So there's scholarships and different things through Power Foundation that if you're able to give them a reason why and show them that you deserve money to go to school, they're more than willing to give you money. Along with our foundation, the Bear Fund, we give grants to communities that allow people to get some better STEM education and easier access to food. But you guys have to be able to write a grant that's appealing to us so we can give you that money. Um, so some small resume boosters that are really easy to uh, attend and get to be a part of. Uh, one would be volunteering. Uh, another one would be um, some small internships that you could do through Monsanto. And obviously you would want to um, build your resume around these things. And a great time to do that, spring break. You're coming right up on spring break, take a day or two, volunteer. And I see you're on your phone. If you go to this web, your website on your phone right now, you can click on community and you can go and sign up to be a volunteer. And that boosts your resume. Yeah, so we know that there's always not going to be resources around. If you ever need time to ask us any questions, we've included our email right here. Feel free to reach out to us. We'll be more than willing to give you some more examples and some more help in the writing field. Thank you for your time. I'd like to apologize. Okay, <clears throat> so you 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 ran short. You're only at four minutes instead of the five. Well, sorry, but um, that is going to cost you a great point. And I thought your presentation was really pretty good. Um, you did a lot of good things in there. Um, so let's go back over and take a look um, and talk about that and. Um, see if I can't give you a couple of little tips maybe to help you out as you're moving forward to get your 
presentations even stronger. So let's start here. Awesome. Good afternoon, guys. My name is Stone. I'm here with my man Gabe. We're absolutely thrilled to get the chance to come down here and talk to you guys about some business writing tips. So, I mean, that's a great opener, isn't it? Um, we know who you are, and you're thrilled to see us. Sweet. Um, thanks. That makes me feel important as an audience member. That's really, really well done, right? So, who are we? We are Monsanto, as you guys must have heard of us. We are um, an agricultural company. Um, we have worked on GMOs and pesticides in the past, and we were founded in 1901. So, Gabe, I wish um, we were there in person so I could ask you. You seem um, a little nervous, and I can't tell why, um, uh, but I can tell that you are nervous. Um, first thought comes was, well, maybe you didn't get your head completely around what it was that you wanted to say and how it is that you wanted to say it. Um, that's a possibility, but I, I honestly can't tell for sure. Um, but somewhere in there, um, it, it's important for you to feel just a little bit more laid back um, and relaxed in the presentation. Like I said, without being able to ask you, I, I can only um, kind of guess. Um, maybe um, because Louise was with us, well, I mean, I can appreciate that she would make anybody's heart go pitter-patter, so perhaps that was it. And yes, that's a joke. So we know from experience just... Nice. Um, didn't catch that the first time through. Ballsy call for a high school class, uh, that's for sure. Um, I liked it. It was fun for us in the classroom setting. Would you pull it off in a um, high school setting coming from Monsanto? <sighs> You're going to the edge there, boys. And honestly, I'm not sure that you'd get away with it. Nevertheless, personally, I thought it was great. Um, way to go. Intimidating it can be to be able to write, especially explain who we are in a business way, especially when we're writing resumes, filling out scholarship essays, doing things of that nature. Again, so we're gonna give Stone you some is, just to is, help you is the way. let so me stop it for a sec. Stone is really, really um, relaxed, really easygoing, really accessible. Uh, you're doing a really great job. Um, Way to go. Um, it's, it's, it's a pleasure watching you present. Identify our audience. We want to do some research and figure out what they want. Um, let's look at the slide here. Um, this visual is just too small. Um, I couldn't really read it in class. And when I've gone through it a couple of times, I've really had to go up to the screen. Now, it's hilarious. Um, I think it's funny. I would suggest just put this on its own slide and just put it out there. Because um, it is funny, <laughs> you know, and it makes your point really, really well. And you could say something like, well, not only can't you be, um, just a second, can't be stopped because you can't read, well, you can't get started because you can't write or something like that. I'm sorry you tucked it up in here. That would just be a suggestion. And then go into the rest of your slide. You could then slide it up into the corner if you want or something like that. Here, what they want from your paper. Second thing we need to do is present these ideas in a really clear and concise way. And again, that way it's not super jumbled up. Think about writing. Sorry, shut you down. Oh, wrong one. Sorry. A 300 page paper is really hard to do. Okay, um, Stone, you're going back in here, and I understand you really want to be out of the way of this. Um, you got to watch yourself and see see how you're blocking off the the slide here. Um, you got to either be in front of this to the side, or you got to get Gabe to move over so that you can move um, over here to do the talking. Because remember what we talked about, you don't want to be behind this. And I get that the classroom's set up really shittily, and it's easy to slide into there. Um, and that's part of learning to present. You have to work with the restraints that are in your room. Passive tones, give you suggestions to fix it. So um, an, ex an example of uh, how to boost your resume and reword something in a way that um, made someone who's had it want to be part of your company. So um, if 
So here, let me stop it for a sec. Um, poor Gabe is the one that's taken the brunt here of the suggestions or critiques at any rate. Um, when that student starts playing um, his tunes, um, at that point, um, you got to consider stopping the presentation because, especially because of what you were just talking about, it's really example, really example. It's really important. You're trying to um, make a, 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 an important point for us. Um, and as you're trying to play through it while that student's playing music, he's going to lose it. Um, all the people around him, I asked Louise, and she sort of missed what you're seeing too because she's getting distracted as well by the sound. So if you catch something like that, got to stop. Um, play it through, respond back to the music in some way, um, whatever works for you. Maybe you want to dance, maybe you want to comment and say, hey, I know another tune by that guy that I think is really great. And once the student's sort of gone through his thing, um, then you can get back be to the example because um, what you're saying, I think, is really important and you want to make sure that your audience um, has got a clear sense of the grammatical questions or the active writing questions or the specifics about what your skills are issues that you're raising here. And um, unfortunately, by getting overridden, if you will, um, by um, the student playing his music, um, it becomes a problem for the rest of the class to hear that. So careful with that. If somebody in your audience is doing something that stupid, um, when you're um, presenting, you get to stop um, and then modify um, your presentation around the interruption. Nothing you can do about it. It's just what you get to deal with. Well, people do shit like that. Um, stop, inter integrate it somehow into the presentation, and then move on. But let's keep going, because you do end up doing that, and let's see how. As are in some other outside activity or some sports. Um, Ralph, um, what would you say, how would you reword this in a better way that would resonate with someone who's hiring? And you're getting the grunt from the student, and I can tell you why, and I gave you that grunt on person. Um, you're talking to an 18-year-old senior. The chances that they've ever hired anybody in their life um, are slim and none. So the question's going right over top of their head. To us, um, who maybe all hired somebody, the question makes sense. And Ralph Hank, your, your um, instructor, certainly understands that question, gets it. Ralph Hank, the pain in the ass student, um, probably isn't catching it. And so you're unfortunately and accidentally putting that student in a place where the most you're going to get from him is a grunt because he doesn't want to show he's stupid because he's trying to impress his girlfriend that he's sitting next to. So he's going to go Joe Cool and completely step back on your question. Looks good. If you were someone trying to hire someone who played basketball or football, would you, wouldn't you want to uh, see that they're more than just a basketball player and see that they're, they're, they have experience working in a team environment? See, and your, your body language here, poor Gabe, he's, he's the one at, at one level who did the stuff that ran into the biggest problem from the audience you're already starting to turn away from us. And I'm willing to bet you're turning away from us because you're getting uncomfortable. You're going, God, I want to leave. I do not want to be looking at these people and connecting with them. So may I offer a suggestion? Louise and I um, were careful about the roles we took on. She um, made a point of trying to pay really close attention to the presentation while I was um, dicking around and not paying that much attention. What you can do in an instance like that is find the people in the class that are paying um, a lot of attention and just ignore the ones that aren't. That'll make it easier for you as a presenter to feel more comfortable and more confident. So maybe um, if you'd have asked Louise that question, um, she'd have given you a much more positive answer and more engaged because she really cared and wanted to hear what you guys were saying, whereas Ralph, the student, was kind of, meh, why am I even here? I wish I were out doing something else. And later on, of course, we find out that he'd rather be out 
um, writing rap music. Uh, we've been talking a lot about... Sorry, I'm going to interrupt again. Uh, you're going to have to help me out. This one I don't get, but that's probably because I'm just not hip enough. Sorry, um, if you get a chance, um, let me know what that's about so I can um, be let in on the joke. That would be kind of nice. Thank you. It's the picture writing, this is why. So there's scholarships and different things through Bio Foundation that if you're able to give them a reason why and show them that you deserve money to go to school, they're more than willing to give you money. Along with our foundation, the Barrett Fund, we give grants to communities that allow people to get some better STEM education and easier access to food. But you guys have to be able to write a grant that's appealing to us so we can give you that money. Um, so some small resume boosters that are really easy to uh, attend and get to be a part of. Like one would be volunteering. Another one would be um, some small internships that you could do through Monsanto. And obviously you would want to um, build a resume around these things. And a great time to do that, spring break. You're coming right up on spring break, take a day or two, volunteer. So that was a sweet joke. Nice. I really like that. Um, and it shows, it's just, um, you, you come through really, really genuine. It's like, uh, your heart is in that joke. It was great. You can see it. Your body language lets us know that. It's absolutely, here, let me go back and um, let's take a quick look at that. Because I, I want you just to watch your body language on this one. Cheering. Watch. You're turning away. Now, here you come, right? And you're talking, you're letting us know. And here it comes. Look at that. There we go. There it is. There's the person coming through. There you are, right? Perfect. All of a sudden, you're becoming much more relaxed. It becomes a conversation between you and the class. Whatever it was you felt at that time, that's what you want to shoot for. Um, that's the feeling you want to go for um, when you're presenting. That sort of sense of connection and relaxed, relaxedness, God, I'm sure that's not a word, um, that you have with your audience. Let me put that back here. Your website on your phone right now, you can click on community and you can... Let me go back there because you gave us exit. You're coming right up on spring break, take a day or two, volunteer. And I see you're on your phone. If you go to this web, your website on your phone right now, you can click on community and you can go and sign up to be a volunteer. See, now that's perfect, right? I mean, you finally went to a place somewhere in, in your head and you're presenting you're going, okay, I can't ignore this clown, okay? I mean, this is getting stupid, which it was, of course, that was done on purpose. And you're going, you know what? Here's my chance. You're on your phone, dude. Here, just go over here. You get to click on here. You get to do some volunteering. Look how easy that is. And it ties right into the kind of life that you're living. And that's really, really great. You did, you did, um, you did an exceptional job there, Gabe. Way to go. You really pulled that one out and you just went right after the student without being mean or nasty, at the same time letting him know that you know what's going on, you see what you're doing, and you're trying really hard to tie into his life. That's just excellent. Mm, excuse me. Try that again. That's just excellent. Yeah, so we know that there's always not going to be resources around. If you ever need time to ask us any questions, we include our email right here. Feel free to reach out to us. We'll be more than willing to give you some more examples and some more help in the back of Okay, so I, I struggled with this, um, but, and let me tell you why. Now, this is from my own experience um, um, in class at university even. Um, here's the issue. You say contact us and you give us... Um, a nice email here. You're making it very straightforward, very easy. You should know that I always put up my contact information um, on um, the board. I put it in the syllabus and almost anybody who wants to get a hold of me asks me for what my email is. There you have it. So you got to do more than just put it up on the um, slide. You got to provide some other way for the students um, 
to connect, maybe put it on a piece of paper, um, give it to the teacher so that the teacher has that contact information. I let the students know that there's a place um, that they can always get a hold of you, put up a poster or something. And I'm not dissing you guys here at all. It's just my own, they're going to they're gonna miss it. They're going to ignore it. Um, that's just what you're going to get from students. That's how it is. So again, dealing with your audience the way it is, um, that's what you're up against. But let's take a look at your questions. Thank you for your time. I'd like to apologize for my boyfriend. He's, no. he's very rude. Hey. So she's, Louise was being um, pretty decent. And I think any young lady, young girl in a classroom is going to do that because I was being such a pain in the ass. Um, and you could have freely commented on that point. point. You say, yeah, why are you keeping him? He must be really cute or something because I was being a major pain in the butt. And I think it would have been reasonable to call me on it a little bit, especially when the girlfriend, who I'm obviously crazy about, um, is already commenting on it. It, it was good music, but you know, it's a time of place. So I have a question though. Um, is it okay to use a fancy script font when you're doing business communication? I want to point out both Stone um, and you, Gabe, in this particular where I stopped it really focused on what she was paying and really showed that you were paying attention. That's excellent. It's going to make her feel like you're really interested in her question and you really want to help her with it. It's better to not do that. It's better to have a really basic, clear um, font that the person who's reading it can glance over it. Look at you go. There you go, Gabe. Look how relaxed you are. Okay. You've got the conversation. You've got everything going. There's the man. Right, we're not seeing the suit and the talking head, which we really did see a little earlier on in this presentation. There's the person, and he's coming through, and you really empathize with her. Yeah, you know, that sort of sucks, doesn't it? And here's the honest to goodness answer, and yeah, I probably would wanna have more fun in my communication, but that's my job, I don't get that option. So excellent, really well done, let's keep going. You're waiting for me. But you know I'm gonna keep it real, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, um, I'm yeah, gonna yeah. wrap up like two chains with Big Sean 42 Doug. How is any of this shit gonna help me be like these guys? Well, if you boost your resume and apply for some of these yeah, internships, you, you can actually make a substantial amount of money and buy those big chains that you're looking for. So are you familiar with J. Cole? Yeah, yeah. there you go. I, uh, Gabe, I love the way Stone went after this. You could see him previous if you go back and take a quick look. He's going, yeah, okay, I got this. Um, I, and he had a clear sense of what his answer was going to be. And he does a great job. Watch. J. Cole actually has a literature degree. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, but we can help you out here. So <laughs> yeah. If you're really trying to get into some rapping and you want to excel your writing skills, going to college is a great way to do it. And there's people that are totally willing to help you out and give you some money if you submit them an essay, kind of explain what you want to do with it and why you want to go to school. They're going to be totally more than willing to give you that money so you can go and earn those degrees. Maybe your rap will like go from SoundCloud rap status to J. Cole status. Look at him go. I mean, come on. He, he threw... He threw the language back at, at him. Uh, I honestly didn't get the reference, but hey, I'm going to assume you got the right one. And he just nailed it, right? I mean, way to go, Stone. You just went right to where the kid lives and you stuck with him. You said, I get it. This is what matters to you. Here's how what we're talking about can help you get what you really want. And that's the key to answering the question really, really well. That was really well done. Excellent work. I know, you want to go to a university, I know. Well, it's a good thing to do. I just want to rob, ask a question. And just because you do one of these small internships or volunteer programs doesn't necessarily mean that you're setting on track to go to university or do any of these things. You're not signing off on a huge deal. You just go into one of these, it's a weekend, maybe. Okay. 
And Gabe, this is again really beautiful. You're obviously keeping it real. Um, you're getting down to just being yourself and responding. You're understanding where the kid's coming from. You're going, look, just because you're doing this little more traditional stuff doesn't mean you can't go back to the rap. You're letting the student know that there's something you should be considering. And frankly, I agree with you. Um, trying to become a rapper is a long shot of the worst order. It's like trying to become a basketball player out of the hood. Yikes. And you're saying, just try the stuff, see what you think. And you're hoping maybe the kid sees it. Um, maybe I'm going to put some thoughts in your head, maybe. Um, you're thinking he's got a girlfriend that might help him along and see that, you know, a little bit more on the straight and narrow, if you will, less than the super curvy might give the kid a better chance um, to have a half decent life. And the university the college for a weekend. That will help you. Do I get a degree in a weekend? What was that? Do I get a degree in a weekend? You cannot get a degree in a weekend. Uh, see, that's about all the time I got. Man. But you could, you could really, you really have to think you had it. Oh, I, oh, okay, fine. Okay, whoops. And there we go. So overall, you guys really did a pretty good job. Um, at the end, when Louise starts talking again and makes her final comment, um, here, let me um, stop sharing the screen, makes her final comment, um, you guys handle it really well. You're letting your audience talk, you're letting your audience engage, and that's a really good thing. So, this presentation, I would be very glad to give an A, and I would, and because of the content, the, the way you presented it, the way you answered the questions, um, it, it was, I found things hopefully that were useful comments to you. Unfortunately, because it was four minutes, I have to put it down to a B. Um, and I am not 100% sure why you guys didn't get it out to five minutes. You, you weren't talking super fast. You weren't rushing through it. Um, something um, disconnected. And again, I wish we were there in person and I could um, address that um, and we could talk about it. And you know what? Um, if you look through this, um, give me a call and we can set up a Zoom meeting and we can talk about it so that I can maybe um, provide you with some feedback and stuff. And again, you guys did an excellent job. Um, I think you have every reason to be proud of the work that you did. And I'm going to get out of here and we'll talk with you again soon. Bye.